Shalom to all of you who woke up early this morning. My name is Chris Nikumana. I'm the host of the Kanwuka Broadcast. Today is Friday, and you know that I often remind you on Fridays that we will all die and no one will remain in this world forever. But even if I keep saying that we will all die, it's a general statement because the Word of God says that there will be some people who will be born in this world who won't experience the normal death. You may have heard about Enoch who was taken straight to heaven, but aside from him, and Elijah, anyone else who was born in this world in the past has died. Enoch didn't die. God took him straight to heaven and he didn't experience death. It was a picture of the rapture of the church when Jesus returns. So we are the people who won't experience death. If you are saved and you will still be alive on that day when Jesus returns, then you won't die. Some people won't die. You can read about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51. It says that we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. Both the dead and the living will be changed. But how come there will be some people who won't die? How is that going to happen? You need to understand that when Jesus comes back to take his church, there are people who will be alive in the world. And some of those people will be people who are saved, people who have repented and who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and who have received forgiveness from sins. So those believers who are saved and who will still be alive when Jesus comes back, they won't die. For instance, let's say that Jesus will come back tomorrow or today at noon. If Jesus comes back to take his church today at noon, all of you who are listening to me and who are saved, you won't die. You will ascend in the air to meet with him and you will be changed. But those who are unsaved will be left in this world and they will experience the rule of the Antichrist. But those who are saved and who will be alive when Jesus returns, they won't die. I wanted to shed some light on this so you can understand that some people will die and others won't die. But everyone will have to leave this world at some point. Whether you die or not, you will have to leave this world. This world is not our home and one day we will all leave it. So how will the rapture unfold? Verse 52 says that in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, it means that the trumpet will sound multiple times. So the trumpet will sound and the dead will will be raised first and then those who are alive shall be changed and they will all rise together to meet with Jesus. My wish for all the listeners is that you will be among those who will rise when the trumpet sounds. I keep repeating these words because it's the truth of the word of God. You may think that this is not important because we are doing well and you don't lack anything. But let me tell you that some of you who are listening to me will have regrets because you refuse to accept Jesus. Maybe you are living in sin and you are enjoying those sins. Maybe you are bound by fornication or lying or jealousy or something else and you don't see any problem with that. Maybe you are bound by drunkenness or a drug addiction. Maybe you are living with someone as a couple outside of marriage and you are living in fornication. I want you to know that there will be a day of judgment. I will say it again. There will be a day of judgment. You won't be able to claim that you didn't know about it because you heard this message. That's why you need to repent and you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are enjoying the pleasures of the world right now, but it's only for a limited time. You definitely have less than a hundred years to live on this earth. Sooner or later, you will have to leave this world. And when you die, it will only be the physical death of your body. Your soul will have to appear before the throne of God. You will face judgment and you will have to give an account for all the things that you you've done. Right now, you still have the opportunity to put your life in order regardless of what you have done. It doesn't matter how many people you've killed. It doesn't matter how many babies you aborted. It doesn't matter how many lies you told. All your sins can be erased if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't need to pay any price because the price has already been paid for you. Jesus paid the price. He gave his blood. He was willing to die for you and for me so we can receive eternal life. That's why I keep reminding you that this world will come to an end. Everything you see will come to an end. The mountain will come to an end. The clouds will come to an end. The sun will come to an end. The pleasures of this world will only last a short time. You can enjoy the pleasures of the flesh, but your body will eventually decay. It's useless to keep focusing on your body. You need to take care of your spirit. If you want to put your life in order and you want to repent, you can call a servant of God who will be 
able to assist you on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven. now time to continue our study of the letter of Paul to the Ephesians which started on January 2nd. On Ephesians chapter 5 verse 24, it says that the wives need to be subject to their husbands in everything. I will explain the last part in a moment. But let me first continue to talk about submitting to your husband as to the law. I want to explain in more detail what I said yesterday. Yesterday I was saying that you need to understand the order which was established by God. The husband is the head of the wife as it is written in verse 23, and Christ is the head of the church. That's the order that God has established. So Paul is explaining that the husband is the head of the wife, meaning that he is the leader that God put above the wife. I want you to understand this. I'm talking about God's principles. If you're a wife, even if you have a lot of money, even if you are more educated than your husband, even if you have more money than him, and you are the one who pays the rent and all the bills, it doesn't change the principle that says that your husband is the head. You may have more money and more education than him, but in the eyes of God, your husband is still the head. I'm talking about God's perspective. You can refuse to submit to your husband. You can refuse to listen to him because you have more money than him or you are more intelligent than him. But if you do that, you are doing something that's contrary to the word of God. The word of God doesn't consider your education level. He doesn't consider how much money you have or how intelligent you are. It just says that God has established the husband as the head of the wife. That's why we need to submit to him. Maybe you are the breadwinner because in this era, many women have better jobs and they are better paid. But the word of God doesn't change. The world has changed. Many things are upside down. But the word of God remains the same. If you are a wife, you need to submit to your husband. Even if you are the breadwinner in your home, you still need to submit to your husband because that's what the word of God says. The husband is the head. It's Jesus Christ who gave him that position of leadership and Jesus Christ is above your husband. So here is the order defined by God. There is God the father, then Christ, then the husband, and then the wife. If you refuse to submit to your husband, maybe because you think that you are right or just because you are more intelligent or more educated than him, it means that you are not just rebelling against your husband, you are also rebelling against the one who's above your husband, so you are rebelling against Christ. We really need to understand this because many wives say, I've tried to humble myself and to submit to him, but he doesn't even notice it. He doesn't thank me at all. He may not thank you, but Christ is pleased when you submit to the person that he appointed over you. I hope that you understand this. You may be trying to please your husband, but he's not pleased. Maybe because he has too many distractions. But if you know Christ, you do it for his sake. You submit to your husband because Christ has put him above you. If your husband is not saved and he's living in sin, maybe he's a drunkard or he's cheating on you and you are praying for your husband so he can know God. Here I'm talking to the wives who pray for their husbands. So if you're praying for him but you don't submit to him, your prayers will be powerless. Many people are not aware of this. You are praying for him. You want him to abandon his sinful ways. You want him to be saved. You want him to be set free. But at the same time, you are not submitting to him, which means that you've destroyed the order that God has established. God told you to obey your husband, so if you don't submit to him, you are rebelling against Christ who's able to transform your husband. Even if your husband is not behaving, you should submit to him as you pray for him. There is power in doing that. Those prayers are powerful because the head of your husband will send his angels. I'm not saying that it's going to happen immediately, but if you persevere, Christ the head of your husband will change his heart. It may take time, but it will happen. You need to continue praying for him with humility and continue to submit to him knowing that you are also submitting to those who are above him. Many women feel that they must be equal to men. 
This is where things are heading in the world, but it's contrary to the word of God. God willing, we continue to talk about it on Monday. I wish you all a great weekend. May I am bless you. If you want to repent or you're transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.